this right here may look like your average camera lens. It's maybe a bit bigger, but you know, you can like click a camera on here in the back and, and light comes in here at the front. But if you remove the lens cap, something odd is inside. This is what's called a mirror lens. This one is from Sam Yang, which actually has a pretty good reputation for making pretty good lenses at a very affordable price. As I said, this is called a mirror lens, and it does so because if we look down the front of the lens, we will see that we're in, as we get in 99% uh, of all uh, camera lenses, you get a um, you get lenses, but here we get a mirror. So we have the light comes in here at the front through the donut opening, hits the mirror at the back, bounces up to the secondary mirror that's hidden behind this black cap and then exits out the back onto the sensor where we can take our picture. So this is essentially just a miniature catadioptic telescope. And when I came across this and I th thought, you know what, this could be like the ultimate travel astrophotography piece of gear where you just put your camera with, that you take with you on vacation anyway and a, a small star tracker um, and then this, and then now you're good to go and you can begin to, to, to take pictures of the night sky wherever you are. Now the cool thing about these, and the why I think these are so attractive is because this has 800 millimeters of focal length. Now for a lens this size, that's a lot. Now we know of course as astrophotographers that these catadioptic tick um, designs have a lot of focal length because they utilize what's called folded optics where light comes into the front, hits the back, bounces off there. So I actually been focused twice through, or been been like running twice through the um, uh, through the optical tube because the first time it doesn't really like focus. It's only focused after it's begin to hit the, the rear mirror. So it travels twice through this, the, the optical tube here, meaning that you get what's called folded optics and you can get much, much larger focal length in a much, much more compact package. However, it's not all good because these things have a rather bad reputation. Normal photographers often don't like these lenses because of the weird bokeh you get. You will know if you're slightly out of focus with a telescope like this, you will get donuts instead of just a fussy star. And you get the same thing here. You get these small donuts all over the picture when you take pictures with this thing, which people don't often like for normal photography. But of course, for astrophotography, we don't care. We're gonna get this in focus, right? So let's take this for a spin. The first thing I did was I thought, you know what, how difficult can this be to work with? It's a very, very straightforward, simple um, lens. So you just throw it on a camera, put it on a star tracker and let's go. I tried that and um, well, the best picture I got of the Pleiades, which you can see here, is rather underwhelming. Like, there's a number of issues with it. First of all, yes, we can see the stars, but we see zero nebulosity. But that is obviously not the only issue. If we just punch in on one of the stars, oh my God, they're ugly. Now, you might say, oh, you're just slightly out of focus. Well, yes, it is out of focus, that is true, but it's worse than just that. So just to get a little bit more practice with this, I decided to take this thing out during the day where I have plenty of light and where I could sit and play with it and see, kind of get familiar with it and try to get a bit more hands-on experience. I was sitting struggling with this lens for, I'm gonna say half an hour. I was trying to take pictures of um, first this tree, way, way, way out in the distance, as you can, can see here, it was very far away. So we really get that 800 millimeter focal length. Um, we're getting some use out of that. But as you can also see, getting a good focus was extremely difficult. You can see me try to focus it here. This was the best picture I was able to get. And again, if we punch in on the tree, well, it's not really in focus at all, is it? Even though that was what I was focusing for. So I tried to go for some of the birds here in the, uh, in the foreground because they were like a big flock of birds. So I thought if I just aim for one of them, even if I slightly inside or outside focus, I'm slightly out of focus, maybe one of the birds that's slightly further away or slightly closer is gonna be in focus instead. And we can kind of use that as a, as a reference to see what is the best possible focus you can get out of this lens. I was trying to focus on this bird here. And again, it's not really super sharp. Try to just take out my normal 70 to 200 millimeter uh, lens, just glass lens, and just take some pictures of some of the birds as well. 
just have a point of comparison. And here I just used autofocus, um, just because it was easy. And you can see we get a much, much better result. It's much sharper, even though we don't have as much focal length to work with. What's the issue here? Well, one of the issues, and this is one of the main complaints and why these kind of lenses have such a bad reputation as they do, is that one, they are extremely difficult to focus. They have an extremely narrow depth of field. So just at the tiniest movement, it's gonna mean you're out of focus. Maybe if you put an automatic focus motor on it, you could get a better result. But as we saw in the video, even when I was pulling through the focus point, it never really got like super sharp. And this is what people don't really like about these lenses and why I would not recommend them. Simply because, first of all, they are dark. They are very, very difficult to focus. And while they are cheap, they are extremely cheap, um, they are just not a very good experience. And this is what I've been reading on the forums about these lenses as well. Some people have been, been really lucky and has been getting a good, sharp image out of these lenses. And others, which have the same make and model of the same lens, have just had terrible, terrible results and could never get it into focus. So to investigate a bit further, I decided to check the lens for collimation issues. So I slightly defocused the lens, and as you can see the image here, it is terrible. What this should look like, it should be a donut with the inner circle being perfectly centered in the outer, and the second is the inner and outer edge of the donut should be sharp, should be crisp, sharp, and ideally we should also see dark like concentric rings inside the donut itself. That fuzzy edge indicates that some of the mirrors, one of the mirrors, maybe both, is not perfectly shaped. Because if it was just a collimation issue, we would still see sharp edges on the inside and outside of the donut. We don't. It is super fuzzy. And that means that this is definitely not like the mirrors are not perfectly shaped. Now, if you notice, there was a small artifact on one of the sides of the donuts. And I think, again, I got this secondhand because I wasn't willing to pay the full price for something that I knew might be cool, but might also just be like junk. And this one actually have a small little defect in one of the uh, one of the main mirrors. I'm not really sure if it's like a crack or what it is, but there's something there on the main mirror um, that definitely shouldn't be there. So overall, I would say the idea behind something like this is really, really cool. And as I said, these are dirt cheap compared to what you would otherwise get for camera lenses this size. So I think if someone actually spent the time to produce a high quality version of something like this, maybe cost twice or three times the price, you get the ability to actually collimate it, then maybe this could be fun. Again, we still have the issues of the uh, of the F8, where it being a very dark lens, you can't really fix that because it's just optics. We could make it shorter focal length. Maybe you can get these in 500 as well. That might be a better option. So we could go down to a lower F number. But overall, as it is right now, this is such a huge gamble that this is not something that I would recommend people to get, despite how cool it would be if this would actually work. We are gonna run into some issues here in a minute because normally camera lenses have their minimal focal distance listed on their spec sheets. Then it also comes in the standard version, which is the configuration that we see here, and it comes in a Astro version, which we're gonna convert it into in a minute. 